Are you having problems with your five star players getting jaded and you know the arrows are going down? Well then you might have a slight issue with balancing your youth development programs. On today's show, that's what I plan to cover. My name, my name, my name is Daljit. Welcome to the show. Youth development can be a quite a tricky process to balance because you sometimes end up in situations where you've done everything correctly, but your youth don't develop. So I've had a few requests in a couple of weeks to take a look at some saves, especially as, as far as youth development are concerned. I've noticed certain things in the saves. And so I thought I'd just do this video to, you know, line all these steps up so it makes them easier for you. So before I go down any further let me know in the comments below how you find your youth training to be like and what are your specific challenges that you have in youth development first step personality is really simple try and develop golden generation after golden generation i've already done a video it's here somewhere uh it explains how i managed to get golden generation and golden generation and golden generations and uh, the other thing you also want to do is also set up your filters in the right way so that you, um, whenever you go out to recruit players, you're recruiting and bringing players to the right kind of personality because personality plays a big part in development. Um, you want a player to have some determination, some professionalism and some ambition. So you ideally going to be mentoring them the right way and you're trying to make sure that you don't go off tangent with your mentoring. Sometimes your mentoring groups can be too big, right? And you don't get the personalities done nicely so you want to make sure that your mentoring groups are kept to a minimum of five don't forget you want the mentees to be influenced significantly or average in the mentoring group and you want the right personalities being the mentors they usually have a significant focus on the group so make sure that the right areas are being covered um, and also make sure that they are also playing in the same units because these are mistakes i commonly see a lot of people making because sometimes they're mentoring a fullback, but you know, the, the group is a bunch of players in the attacking unit. So that's not really going to work. The second thing you need to make sure is staff. Have you hired the right director of football, right head of youth development and the right under 19 staff? Because what you want to do is you want to make sure that these staff have the right personality as well. You can't ignore personality because their personality will rub off on those players that are coming through the system. So you want to make sure that you've got the right personalities as well as, you know, these guys having the right attributes as well. So make sure you don't ignore this. Three, make sure you track these players. I cannot, you know, re keep re-emphasizing how useful the notebook is. Command K, enter a notebook, you see a yellow dot on that player, you can track him all the time. And it makes you makes it a lot easier for you to, you know, when there's a news item regarding that player not performing well in training, you know he's one of the players you're tracking. For this is kind of important because too often I see saves where you haven't decided what role you want these youth players to, to play. A lot of people go in and they just I don't know what to choose. So I'll just leave it on default. Problem with default is the game is going to make the... It's like rolling a dice between a few roles which the game is going to decide. So you, you're you not going to get focused development in your players. So my recommendation is, especially for those guys who are four or five stars, these guys have potential to go really far. You want to be decisive in choosing their roles. So look at your main team, what they're playing and give a role that you foresee that player being able to play in the main team. Five, and this is going to be a tough one for you, traits. Get them to learn the traits when they're in the youth team. Don't wait for them to get into the senior team. There's a simple reason why. Traits are cheaper to learn when in the end the youth team because the, the benchmark is quite low. It's usually about 13 points. But the moment they get into the senior team, it goes to 15. So how long are you going to wait? I mean, do you want him? I would much rather have a youth player learning killer balls and then when he comes into the senior team, I'm rotating him in for 45 minutes, giving him a chance to play and then slowly get comfortable, right? Then in a couple of years' time, you know, he becomes a senior player, but he's already got that trait, right? 
And I don't have to worry because by the time he's kicking on and playing for 90 minutes, he also has that trade there. Hallelujah, he's playing well. But if you wait until he's in the senior team, you got two problems. First, it's going to take a really long time for those, uh, you know, for him to hit 15, for example, in passing vision decisions and flair. And then after that, you know, he's going to want to be you playing him for 90 minutes and expecting him to learn that trade as well. There's a lot of load. So you i got to ask yourself a question, which is more efficient? Six, and this is where the challenge begins for most people. Youth players should not be made to play 90 minutes of football. If he's 17 years old, don't, don't please don't make him play 90 minutes. <laughs> Have you seen what has happened to Joey at Kashim Pasha? 17 years old, I decided, well, I'm going to bring him to my Kashim Pasha side. Yeah, he's better than the rest of the squad, but his development has also stalled because he's playing 90 minutes all the time. So if you have a youth player and you want him to learn traits and you want him to develop, then rotate him. Balancing youth development is kind of tricky. So what I like to do is I identify my top players, like my top young players early. They have to be like four stars or five stars. Then I promote them to the main team where they get mentored. Now, while they're mentoring, I know that they'll be training with the main team. I make sure that they're in the right units as well. I give the player a year to be mentored. One is he's mentored. I push him back to the youth team where he's going he's gonna to finish learning up his traits. Now, the important thing is here is this. While he's with the main team, I want to make sure that he does not play for more than 45 minutes a week. This gives him time to train with the main team as well as if he requires match fitness, I always make him available for the youth team. So it's a bit of a juggling act. You play him in the main team, make him available for the youth team. But once he's been mentored, I move him back to the youth team. That way, I make sure that this player doesn't suffer the dreaded jaded symbol. Because the moment he becomes jaded and needs rest, I'm in trouble. And it's a very, very fine line that we have to walk. It's easy with the rest of the players, right? The moment they're 18 years old, the rest of the three stars and four stars, they don't make the cut for the main team. It's This this group is really easy. All you got to do is make sure that they are playing for a team of with with a relevant standard. Like last year, um, we had Niklo Mafe when I was managing AC Milan and he was good enough to play in the main team, but you know he couldn't make the first 11, but I needed him to get footballing experience. So we loaned him off to Ajax, where he played the whole season. And when he came back, he was much stronger, and he walked into my main team, and he was a superstar. So it's possible for you, but you need to find the right team that he can go on loan for. So players that don't make the cut for your main team, well, you've got to loan them out. The best players, they've got to go out. They cannot be stuck in your youth team or worse still, the under-23 team. Now, when it comes to the under-23 team, that is the, uh, you know, the, the sentence you've handed to the player. He's got no future in the club. The under-23s basically are the, we hope you turn into something better group, right? So don't, I don't, you know, I don't put my bets on them at all. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, short little video on how you can balance youth development. If you have any questions about this, please look me up. I stream Mondays and Wednesdays and Fridays. On Wednesdays, I do trainings-related questions. You can bring your saves. I'll take a look at them. And then, yes, I'm sure that uh, we'll have a lot of interesting uh, things to talk about during the stream. So you guys, once again, take care. Have a good one. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.